Now this example for evaluating line integrals is we're going to look at uh, a starting point and an ending point and two different paths that go from the first to the second point. We're going to begin both paths at the origin at zero, zero, and both paths, not very long, but they'll be different, will end at the point one, one. So this line integral says we're going to calculate the work done um, by a vector field along a path. And just as a reminder to you, we need a vector field. So this will be the vector field f of x, y equals components x, y, comma, x squared. That's our vector field. So we're going to use two pretty simple curves. Uh, one will be um, a line, y equals x, and the other will be a simple curve, y equals x squared. Both of those curves begin at the origin and then also pass through the point one, one. So let me just give you a little bit better visual of what we're about to do here. So both paths are going to start here at the origin, and this path is going to do a little linear shot from the origin to the point one, one. And this point is going to start at the origin and going to go on a slightly concave up curve also to the point one, one. So the question is, will the work be the same? Will the work calculated be different? So let's just investigate. First, we need um, to write the parametric or the vector version of these curves. So for the linear function, y equals x, r of t would be equivalent to um, x is t and y is t. And those va will happen from time values from 0 to 1. If t is 0, you begin at the origin. And if t is 1, you end at this point here, 1, 1. We'll eventually need the velocity vector, so let's calculate the velocity vector really fast. So the derivative of the x component is 1, and also is the same is true for the derivative of the y component. Now the parabola, its vector function, um, we can let x be t, and y would be equal to whatever x is squared which would be t squared, and t will go from 0 to 1 again for this, but the curve will be slightly different, slightly longer path to get from the origin to the point 1, 1. What's its velocity vector? That's right. Um, derivative of the x component is 1, derivative of the y component is 2t. So we have the pieces, but we need to sort of assemble them to kind of together. So let me just scroll upwards, and we're going to focus for this first example um, what happens if we use this curve. And then we'll come back and look at the parabola for the next example. Here we go. So for curve one, we have the line. Um, r1 of t equals t comma t and velocity vector is 1 1 so when I go to substitute it into my vector function line integral from 0 to 1 and x is going to be t y is going to be t comma x squared, which is t comma d squared, dot product velocity vector, which is the vector 1, 1 with respect to t. Pretty simple calculation, so let's go for it. Whoops, there we go. All right, equals. And we've got to get here t squared comma t squared dot product one comma one. That's the same as from zero to one. Uh, one times t squared plus one times t squared. We 
which is 2t squared. And when we integrate this, we will get 2t cubed over 3, evaluated from time is 0 to time is 1. And this gives us 2 thirds. Now in a physics problem, um, one uh, unit of measurement for work would be joules um, or newton meters is another way to look at that. That assumes you know kilograms and meters and seconds for units of time. And we don't have any units provided, so we're just going to say the answer is two-thirds. Whoops. All right, there we go. Now, let's look at the second version of the problem. Second curve was the parabola r of t is components t and t squared. Time goes from 0 to 1. And the velocity vector is 1 comma 2t. So work will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. And we have to substitute carefully into our vector field. Quick little reminder, vector field was x times y multiplied by x squared. Or sorry, second component is x squared. So what do we get here? x is t, y is t squared, comma, x squared would be t quantity squared, dot product 1 to t with respect to t. And do a little bit of algebraic cleanup here. 0 to 1, t cubed, t squared, dot product, 1 times t cubed is t cubed, whoops, I'm not there yet, 1, 2, t, so we get 1 times t cubed is t cubed, 2t multiplied by t squared is 2t cubed. And before I integrate it, let's just do combining, combining these terms. 3t cubed with respect to t. Now I'm going fast intentionally because these busy algebraic uh, details, you really need to sit down and process through them. And we've done many, many, many of these in class. So I'm highlighting, kind of like the solution manual does. Let's scroll a little bit further up here. The antiderivative is going to be 3t to the 4th divided by 4, evaluated from 0 to 1. This gives us 3 fourths. Now I want you to be aware of that when we use the linear path, work was equal to 2 thirds. And we did this nonlinear path. We get the work equals 3 fourths. I think the takeaway just is this. One path might be longer or harder than another path. And it might take work, more work to do it. So maybe the shorter distance takes less time, and that's why it's less work. Or maybe... There's another scenario where the short way is really steep and it's hard to do. And the longer path is less steep and it maybe actually takes less work physically because of the, the it's not as steep. Those are things to consider that the line integral um, does automatically. So with two different paths, two different values for work, it is possible to have paths, two different paths that give the same work. Vector fields can have symmetry of sorts. What we're going to be interested in next is, is there ever a situation where all the paths are either same or different? Stay tuned.